Uh, good evening, I'm Sean Green with Sports Night. Starting with cricket, Barbados Pride have a 45-run first innings lead over the host Trinidad and Tobago Red Force on day two of their ongoing West Indies four-day championship match at the Brian Lowry Cricket Academy. In reply to the Red Force's 170, the Pride were bowled out for 215. Uh, there has been a joint top score of 47 from Nicholas Curtin and Shamar Springer, while Odin Smith took three for 32. The Pride have already started to make inroads into the Red Force second innings. They are 10 for 2. Commentary is live on Radio 94.7 FM. In the other games at the Guyana National Stadium, the Guyana Jaguars lead the Leeward Islands Hurricanes by 97 runs. The scores there, the Jags 196 and 76 for 2. The Hurricanes 175 with, with Clinton Pistano taking 4 for 50. And at the Grenada National Stadium, Jamaica Scorpions trail the Windward Islands Volcanoes by 73 on first innings. Scores there, the Volcanoes 285, Scorpions 212 for four, with Chadwick Walton unbeaten on 113 with 12 fours and a six. Staying with cricket, West Indies middle order batsman Sunil Ambrose had a good warm up for the West Indies President's 11 at the 3Ws Oval today against England. This was on the final day of their two day match. And Ambrose was the only batsman to handle the England bowling, top scoring with 94. Here's some of the action before lunch. We pick up the action with two wickets already in the bag. Chandapur Hemraj and Sunil Ambrose at the wicket, flicked away beautifully off his legs. Ambrose gathering four through square leg. Hemraj had gotten to 22 before getting this delivery from Stuart Broad. Gobbled up at slip by Ben Stokes. It's 53 for three. Jamar Hamilton replaced him and got going with a flowing drive all along the carpet. The fielder could do nothing but fetch. Good looking shot. Stokes now to Ambrose. Half volley and dealt with appropriately. Driven away through the covers for four. Ambrose driving Stokes once more, a bit edgy, just wide of slips and racing away to the third man boundary. We were delivery down the leg side by the bowler, glance fine by Ambrose for another boundary. Stokes to Hamilton, a return catch and he grasped it, doing well to get his hand to it but he just couldn't hold on. But Stokes would get his revenge. Hamilton snapped up by Josh Butler for just nine. West Indies President's 11, now 79 for four. Vishal Singh was next in and next out. Caught at slip, but no, it's a no ball. And he lives on to fight another day. But Ambrose was still soldiering on. Getting some width outside the Austin. Cracking through point for four runs. This one was turned off his hip through square allowing the batsman to cross and with that Ambrose celebrates yet another first class half century. Alid Rashid to Ambrose who goes big down the ground one bounce for four he went to lunch on 59 as the president's 11 went to lunch at 99 for four. Well, that game ended in a draw with scores. England, 379. The President's 11, 233. That's the amount of runs they accumulated, losing 11 wickets today with Chris Wokes taking three for 31. Well, Red has retained their inter-house athletics title at the Reynolds Weeks Primary School. Today at Rice's, Red accumulated 568 points, 50 ahead of Blue, with Green in third and Yellow in fourth. The victor Ludorman was RJ Giddings of Blue. He had 60 points, while the victrix was Alisa Weeks of Red. She had 53. Here's Damien Best. Rice's in St. Philip, the venue finding shade a necessity in these conditions. Let's get to the action on track then. Under nine girls, 100 meters pretty even after 10. Ari Graves of yellow in lane two and Chloe Till of blue in lane one. Graves stumbles just a little bit and that gives Taylor a slight edge. Third place going to Tiki Edgel. Boys next, what can they do? Middle of the battlefield is Dante Annie of Red House. Look cool and deadly. Under no pressure. Second, Daniel Whitaker, also of red. Third, Amir Callender of green. Under 11 girls, Red House again, adding more spice to the pot. To the hard way, coming at you. Talisha Stout and Jamaica Bryan. Stride for stride, shoulder to shoulder, dipping on the line. But they give it to Stout. 
Slow motion, please. Way too tight to call. They say Stoke in lane seven collected the goal. But we had to pick up the under 11 boys race at the halfway stage due to some obstruction. Javon Blackman getting of green, left the others in his way. Blue House athletes in second and third. Stepping up a notch onto the under 13 girls now. Another sea of red. Alyssa Weeks in lane six and the Shea Springer in five. Weeks really casual with 10 meters to go. Looking over her shoulder. Springer second and the killer hole of green third. Then to cap things off in the sprints, the big boys of the school. It's hot outside, but RJ Gittins of blue lit a fresh flame in lane six. And at 50 meters, they were scorched. Gittins by a mile. Housemate Davion Jones of blue second. And Kevin Wickham of green third. A quick word from the champ. Tell me what was the game plan coming into the race yesterday? Just try to win as much as I can. And of course, I couldn't leave you without a little taste from the supporters. Renault Weeks Primary ready to take their charges to Knapsack. Damien Best, CBC Sports. Well, thanks, Damien. Well, another young Barbadian volleyballer will be heading off to the U.S. tomorrow on an athletic scholarship. She is a dual national player, Shante Seal, who has represented the island in both volleyball and netball. Well, I'll be going to North Dakota, um, Dakota College, and it's a two-year program at JUCO. And I'm basically going there to study accounting, and then I'm looking to transfer off to university to further my studies and also further my volleyball. Well, Seal has only been playing volleyball for about five years, and despite an impressive learning curve so far, she still knows that she still has a long way to go. My story is a funny story because I only started late in 2013, where I didn't know nothing but spiking the ball. So basically, my coach Patrick Oxley, he helped me along the way with my development and stuff. And now I'm probably... People say I'm probably the best at my age, but for now I don't think I'm the best as yet because I still have stuff to work on skills-wise and balancing both making errors in game and continuing on in the game without letting that bother me. So yeah, 